Bless day, my beloved. I'm not going to smile too much because of the obvious reason. <laughs> my tooth has gone south again. But we can smile because God loves us. Yes. And, he, and I love him and we all love him. Not everybody loves him. But it is just wonderful to know that God is in control. That God loves us. He cares for us. And this is such a privilege. I had a woman visit me last, uh, uh, yesterday afternoon. She sat for a couple of hours. She lives in Grayton. And um, we, had a good, we had a nice chat, but uh, she was coming from an angle that I didn't understand so well. Um, you know, people can enhance their lives by being involved with nature and, you know, uh, look off the trees and look off the animals and all this type of thing. And, and then I said, you know, I said, you know, ma'am, the problem with the world is that man is not prepared to accept Jesus as a personal savior. That's the problem. Because man wants to live the way he wants to live. And the Bible says we were all born in sin. And she says, sin? What do you mean sin? And I had the privilege of explaining to her what sin is all about. Um, I gave her my phone number. She's welcome to come visit me again. But there's no way that she wasn't convinced me that the way to better our lives is to live in better places. You know, uh, look off, look off the, our, our vegetation. Look off the, she spoke about grasslands and... It was just a very, uh, uh, where she came from was in a very confusing angle. I do understand a bit of conservation, but uh, um, I said, man, what the man needs and what people need is Jesus Christ. A story is told of a man that, uh, uh, that frequented this particular church, and um, oh, he was a member of the church, and um, he had this horrible habit of whenever the minister starts, the, the pastor starts preaching, he falls asleep. <laughs> and to and add insult to injury, he sat right in front of the church, you know, in the front pew. And the pastor became very agitated and very upset with this thing happening every time. The moment he starts preaching, the guy falls asleep. And then he thought, you know, I'm going to dress, I'm going to do something. I'm going to do something the pastor decided. And then when he started this, on this particular night, when he started his sermon, this guy fell asleep as usual. And then he, the pastor said to the congregation, all those who want to go to heaven, stand. And of course, the whole congregation stood up. <laughs> And then, and this guy continued sleeping, and everybody looked at this guy, oh, what's happening here? And then the pastor said, all those who want to go to hell, stand. And the guy woke up with the word stand, and he stood up. <laughs> and the church and the congregation looked at him just and said, oh, what, you know how people are, is he crazy, and all this type of thing. And the guy was very really embarrassed, he said, I don't know why, he was looking at me, but I'm standing with the pastor. <laughs> Beloved, I'm so, I'm so blessed and so honored to be able to bring the word again this morning. And the title of our sermon this morning is Godly Certainties in Uncertain Times. Yes. Godly Certainties in Uncertain Times. Uncertainty is, a, uh, being uncertain means you know, people are, uh, when, it's, when it's uncertain, they would use words like, I don't know. Do you think it will work? I wonder if the marriage will survive. What do we do now? Are you sure? And there's a host of other words that people speak to describe uncertainty. Uncertainty breeds fear. And fear feeds uncertainty, and they go hand in hand. Everywhere we look, 
we see uncertainty. Political divisiveness, corrupt governments, youth in rebellion, moral decay, nations in turmoil, attacks on Christians, floods, fires, earthquakes, death, and disaster. All of these, all of these happenings breeds uncertainty and insecurity. You know, if we look at the situation in the world today, we can't help yeah, but be uncertain. And this is what, it, what takes place. Is things going to happen? Is things ever going to work out? You know, beloved, it is just a fact. Things the Bible says will never go get better. Perilous times will come upon this earth. And uncertainty will increase. People will, will be, become negative because of the uncertainties. <coughs> There's a few things that I would like to mention that's uncertain. Beauty. Read Proverbs 31 verse 30. Beauty is uncertain. You know, there are billions of rands being spent on people making, to make themselves beautiful. But at the end of the day, we all age. <laughs> <laughs> so beauty is very uncertain. You know, people will spend money to be nice instead of being nice. People are making millions of rands because, you know, it's anti-aging products. It's, uh, uh, my daughter loves makeup. <laughs> my baby. And um, when she's finished, she says, Dad, do I look gorgeous? I say, oh, sweetheart, you look gorgeous. But, you know, what I'm trying to say is that there's such a lot of effort put into wanting to be beautiful. But it's an, it's an uncertainty. You don't know whether you're going to be, what you're going to be in a few years' time. So, but the Bible says in this, in this Proverbs, but the person that fear, or the woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Mm. And that's a certainty. Being beautiful, being nice, is but temporary. But if you fear the Lord, especially the woman, you shall be praised. Mm. The other thing that is very uncertain is man's promises. If you read Psalm 146, verse 3, that is such a fact that people will make promises to each other and they don't, they don't come forth with their promises. Promises is such an uncertainty. Promises, you know, you're making a promise, but you don't know whether you're going to fulfill that promise. So there's a lot of uncertainty involved in that. Riches, you read Proverbs 23, verse 5, riches. There's such a lot of uncertainty in riches. You can be rich today and poor tomorrow. What you have attained in life or what you've, uh, uh, you know, um, accumulated in life can disappear in a wink of an eye. So I want to be rich in Jesus Christ. I want to have His riches in my life. Today we read about prosperity. I read, I, I, I watched a video that was, that was sent to me by a dear sister about a, a certain, uh, well, I'm not here to condemn churches and so on, but the fall of Hillsong. And this particular, this particular minister, this youth pastor, that, thank you, there, uh, Josh. And this man acquired fame and money. And he became quite popular all over the world. And at the end of the day, he never focused on Jesus. The, the riches, the, the fame, uh, the status, all made him go all right. And at the end of the day, he lost everything. Ended up having affairs, you know, ended up being, doing things that wasn't right. If he, had a, if he was certain about his faith in Jesus Christ, it wouldn't have happened. But he, he never knew, well, he thought at that present time while he was doing what he was doing, that it was all okay. At the end of the day, the devil got all of the situation. Lest a man think he stands, he can so easily fall. The future, Proverbs 2 verse 27 verse 1, we, we are uncertain the future, we don't know what the future holds. 
We, do, we can't say we're going to do this, that, and the other. Because we don't know what the future holds. So people that want to that plan must plan and say, Lord willing. Don't just plan and do things without considering the situation. The future doesn't belong to us, it belongs to God. We live for today. It's good to plan for the future, but we live for today. Today is God's grace. Tomorrow is unknown to us. Friendship, very uncertain. You know, this is a thing that, 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 that I had to experience the hard way. People, they love you, they oh, you're a great guy or you're a great girl and whatever. And the friendship looks good, but it's uncertain. Because, you know, you can be, uh, you can be friendly with somebody today, uh, or somebody who can be your friend today, and tomorrow he's an enemy. This happens. This does happen, beloved, believe me. You can't be certain of friendships, but we have a friend in Jesus. Who remains, what a friend we have in Jesus, all your griefs and sins to be. Then, life is uncertain. James 4 was, I'm reading the scriptures that if you write it down, you can read it at home. Life is very uncertain. You know, people plan and people say, yes, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But he doesn't know. It reminds me of an incident in the Bible where the man had such a good crop. And he was so, so pleased with his crop. And he said, I'm going to build, break down this old sheds and build bigger sheds. And the Bible says, you fool, tonight I require your soul. If we think of life, we think in terms of what God wants in your life. What God does in your life. Then earthly glory. Oh, earthly glory, so uncertain. You're there today and gone tomorrow. And we've seen this happen time and time again. If you open our papers, we watch TV, or we listen over the news. People, glory, earthly glory, is, but, is very uncertain. I would rather want to glory in my God. Like I'm sure all we'll of us here tonight, this morning, would want to do. To glory in Jesus. Because he means so much to us and he's done so much for us. Difficult roads always lead to beautiful destinations. Life is not easy. We do have our battles and we do have our struggles and we do have our challenges. And sometimes we go through great difficulty. But difficult paths or difficult roads always lead to beautiful destinations if you're a Christian. If you love the Lord. You know, sometimes you have to let go to find out that God holds us. Amen. Sometimes we have to let go and to find out that God is holding us. Because we're so busy doing what we want to do and, and how we want to do it, then we forget God is in control. God should be in control. Yes. Certainty. Certainty is such a positive thing. We say uncertainty can be negative. You know, some people say, but Pat, you know, sometimes it's good to be uncertain about something because it, gives, it presents a challenge. I agree. <coughs> but I'd rather be certain about some situations or a situation than to be uncertain. To be certain means to be sure. To be certain means to be definite. To be certain means to be fixed. To be certain uh, uh, means to be, it's proven to be true. To be certain, it's inevitable. To be certain is settled and it's incapable of falling. Certainty and faith goes hand in hand. The more certain you are, the more faith you have. The more faith you have, the more certain you become. Isaiah, Isaiah chapter Oh my, that is terrible. <laughs> Isaiah chapter 4, verse 10. For not, for not, for, fear not, sorry, fear not, for I am with you. Do not look around in terror and be dismayed. For I, I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of righteousness and justice. Isaiah 4 is then. Fear not, 
Psalm 55 verse 22, cast your burden on the Lord. He will never allow the righteous to be moved. That's certainty. That's being certain. Taking faith and taking hold of God's word and believing it. Peter 5 verse 7 says, casting all your cares and your anxieties and all your worries, all your concerns on him for he cares for you. That's wonderful, beloved. To know that God cares me. I don't have to be anxious. I don't have to worry. I don't have to scratch my hair. Well, those who are bold, I don't know how you do it, but <laughs> we, don't have to be, we don't have to be fretful. Yes. Hallelujah. We can cast all our cares on him, not some. Some people want to cast some cares on him. Bible says cast all. Alles op hom. Die gedra. Hallelujah, what a savior. <coughs> Casting all your cares upon. We don't have to gray, have gray hair. You know, those who have gray hair, the Bible says it's wisdom. But you know, we don't have to get, they say when you, when you fret and you stress, you develop gray hair. Well, I see a lot of people get so many gray hair. <laughs> but the thing is, is my beloved, we don't have to fret. Ons hoef nie bang te wees nie. God is vir ons. En wie kan teen ons wees? We've got to believe that. We've got to accept that. We've got to live that type of life. My case is on the Lord. Moet nie daar loop gebid. Oh, het sal nooit verstaan wat ek die maag nie. What did Jesus do for us? What did he go through for us? He died on the cross of Calvary. He arose the third day. He sits on the right hand of God, his Father. And all my case, and all your case, beloved, is on him. Don't speak to me. There's a saying that says, don't speak to me, speak to my lawyer. I'm telling you, don't speak to me, speak to my Jesus. <laughs> He's got my problems. He's got my anxieties. He's got my concerns. Speak to him. Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7. I like warming up, you know. It's amazing how the spirit works. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything by prayer, with thanksgiving, continue to make your needs known to God. Don't go pray there with a, oh, you know, pray with a thanksgiving. Lord, you are on the throne. And you will remember your own. That's how you approach God in prayer, fam. You go there with thanksgiving. Don't go and complain. Go and say, thank you, Lord, you're in charge of my life. Thank you, Lord, you're in control of what I do, what I say, how I live. Proverbs 3, verse, uh, verse 5 to 6. Lean, trust, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind. And do not rely on your own insight and understanding. Verse 6 says, in all your ways, in all your ways, know, recognize, and acknowledge Him. He will, and He will direct your path and make straight your path. Beloved, the problem with, with, with the church maybe today is because people, the church wants to depend on what they think or how they think should be done. But we are told this specifically, let us not lean on our own understanding. Consult God, find out what He wants, not what we want. A.W. Tozer says, we must meet the uncertainties of this world with the, certain, the certainty of the world to come. Can I repeat it? We must meet the uncertainties of this world with the certainty of the world to come. In other words, brother, we, I'm going to, I'm just preparing myself here on earth. I'm not going to bother, I'm not going to stress, 
I'm not going to fight with this one and that one. I'm not going to be the horrible person. I'm not going to be nasty with neighbors. In other words, I'm preparing myself here on earth for the world to come. And that's a certainty. Here is a, here is a few comforting certainties to encourage the believer. Number one, sure promises. That's a certainty. Promises that God gives us. First King, Kings 8 verse, verse 56 says, Praise be to the Lord who has given rest to his people just as he promised. Not one word has failed of all the good promises he gave through his servant Moses. What God promises he does. God's promises, my beloved, to us as believers is sure. God cannot lie. Number two, comforting certainty is a sure foundation. Isaiah 28 verse 16 says, so this, so this is what the sovereign Lord says, see, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who trusts will never, ever be dismayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Beloved, you can say hallelujah for that because Jesus Christ Amen. is our cornerstone. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise his name. I might have mentioned this previously, but the cornerstone is the chief stone. Amen. It's a main stone. It's a, a stone that makes the house solid. Yes. But I is a storm come and fall on me. It's a sure foundation. Hallelujah! Our faith is built on nothing less but Jesus Christ and His righteousness. Not my self-righteousness, Jenny. Not who I am. Physic. I'm a sinner saved by grace. We are sinners saved by grace. Praise His holy name. That's our foundation. I play in a hope, I see. As the storm is going to be hard, come and see me from Petty Duck. Petty Duck. Pass it me from Praise the Lord, my wife is in church this morning. When the wind blows, she says, Pet, hold the roof. She said, I don't worry about that. It's the roof. Hallelujah, beloved. We have a sure foundation. When the storm of life beats against your house, when the challenges come, when the, when the difficulties come, when we are challenged and we, 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 we don't know where to go or what to do, hallelujah, Jesus is your foundation. We don't have to fear. Jenny, this is you and the Alan also. Praise the Lord. I'm very hard too, but you've got a foundation, my beloved. A sure reward. Number three. Matthew 10 verse 42 says, If anyone gives someone a cup of cold water and he is my disciple, he will not lose his reward. Amen. Beloved, it's important for us to give. I love, and I don't love much just because they give, but Great and Christian Fellowship, has, that is one of the, the, if I may say this in the meeting, in the, the morning service this morning, one of the, the the standard rules and principles are to give. Amen. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Amen, Pastor? It's more blessed to give than to receive. We're not misers. We don't hold things. Amen. We give as unto the Lord. And we will never, ever lose our reward. Amen. Number four is divine love. Oh, this is a magic scripture. When I say magic, I don't mean magic. This is a beautiful scripture. Romans 8, verse 38 to 39. We all know this. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor neither angels, nor demons, nor the future, nor any power, verse 39, neither height nor depth, 
neither anything else in all the creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. That's certainty. Amen. Nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. If there's a problem, you know, uh, uh, if there's a problem in your, in your love life with Jesus, uh, believe that the problem doesn't lie with him. It does lie with you. Nothing can separate us from the love that we find in Christ Jesus. Beloved, this should be our victory song. Jylle kan doen wat jylle wil, mense. Maar ek stand vast in die Heere. I know God loves me, Josh. And that is such an assurance. That is such a, a beautiful thing to know. It's awesome. That nothing can separate us from the love of God. And assured, number five, very quickly, and assured immortality. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse one. Now we know that he, now we know that, that if our earthly tent is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal home in heaven, not built with human hands. We are assured immortality. Don't think if you die, that's the end of it. We are eternal souls. And God has built a home for us. That when this tent dies, when this, this body goes. There's a home for us built, not by human hands. Oh, you know, as, 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 he, as a man's betrokken is in the in die, in die gebouwen in the hemel, dan dan wil ik je weten. Dan zijn problemen die hij ze in de hemel. But because it's built by God, not with human hands, I can't wait to go to see my home. Yes. Are you excited to go home? Yes. <laughs> Are you excited to go home if I may repeat? Yes. Because I'm going to see Peter up there, Paul. Oh, I wanna, uh, we will spend such an eternity speaking to them about their, 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 what they did for Jesus and what Jesus did through them. I always say this and I, I, I can't help myself, but, but you know, I think I've got my ass on Praise Avenue. You know? Not Dan Wesselstraat, die Praise Avenue. Not the main road, great and Hallelujah Avenue. We're going to live in heaven forever. In the presence of Jesus Christ. Are you excited? Amen. If this doesn't excite you, then you have a problem. Because <laughs> if he, the thought of heaven doesn't excite you, fam, that's how it's going to live. As he says, he's a Christian. Jesus. Then we have an eternal anchor. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 6 verse 19. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul. Firm and secure. It enters the inner, it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. The writer to Hebrews says, we have this hope as an anchor. And this hope is that Jesus is coming again to fetch his church. And this anchors us. This keeps us firm. So when as mommy scale or daddy scale of my neighbor only for many, or I haven't got a job, or I don't know what to do, but I'm a Christian, I have a hope. And this hope is Jesus Christ. I'm going to share something. In closing, that I don't always, I don't always normally speak about this. Because it's a very sad part of my, when I was backslidden. Very, very sad part of when I was backslidden. I was living in Weinberg. In a sinful relationship. Backslidden, far from God. And uh, I remember we had a party the Saturday night, and, or the sun, or I don't know, it was over the weekend, and uh, drinking and drugging and all this type of thing. And uh, ended up having an argument with this particular person. And I felt so, the next day, I felt so depressed. 
so despondent, so left that I, was, I felt I was so alone. Sixth Street. I went to the back of the house, into the shed. Past there. I went, opened the shed, and I took a rope. The devil's with me, You're not the devil's. You're not the devil's friend. You're not his associate. He, he, he wants to destroy you. And I put the rope around my neck and I stood in a little box. And these were my words, Josh. Nobody loves me, nobody cares about me, nobody thinks about me. And believe me, there were so a lot of people that loved me and cared about me. But this is what the devil does. He takes over your mind. And I stood in this box with a rope around my neck and I said, nobody wants to, 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 to assist me. In it. I had a lot of complaints. But in believe, this is why I love the Lord, beloved. This is why I believe that there is a God. Amen. I heard a small voice say, I love you. Yes, I ignored it, you know. And I said, and I was going to jump in it. I love you. And I heard this, and this thing kept reverberating in the shed. I love you. I love you till I could hear that it was on speakers. I love you. And I realized it was my savior. Jesus. I realized that Jesus says, I will never leave you, neither forsake you. Amen. I died for you, I live for you. I'm on the right hand of God for you. I am your advocate. I jumped from my box with tears in my eyes and I took it up my neck. You know why, beloved? Because God loves me. I realized even if my mom didn't love me and she loved me, even if my, my siblings didn't love me, I don't care who did, who, if they don't love me, God loves me. Yes. And I want to tell you fellowship this morning, God loves you. People do weird things because of not being loved. Yeah. Do I have to elaborate on that? People do weird things because you're not loved. Let me tell you something. It's no secret. God loves you. He died for you. He loved you so much that he sent his son to die on the cross of you, for you. Not to make us good people. Not to give us a status lift. But that we can become his humble servants. To live for him. To work for him. To reflect him in everything we do. In everything we say. I do feel nice when people walk past my house in Casey Top. That's uh, an art in Hollywood. <laughs> I, I like when people walk past my house. Uh, it, it makes me feel good. More Uncle Pat, more Uncle Pat, more Uncle Pat. And I thought, Lord, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have this respect that people show me. Beloved, this is the closing word that I would like to say. Faith, to me, is having absolute certainty that God is in control of my life and your life and that he has my very, very, very best interest at heart. Dan Ellis is the one who quoted this. And I'll repeat it in closing. Faith to me is having absolute certainty that God is in control of my life and that he has my best interest at heart. Praise the Lord. Beloved, times are hard. Things are, there's no, there's no, no such thing as happy days are here again. There's no such thing that as things are going to improve. Never. All I can say is, cling to Jesus. Love him, serve him, in spirit and in truth. And you'll see what God does in your life. Reflect him to others. Reflect him in, in front of your neighbors. Reflect Jesus in front of your neighbors, in your social circles at work, social circle at work, wherever you go. Reflect Jesus. It's important. Amen.